for coming uh, this evening and let everyone know who's here. <clears throat> you are very special to us. Everyone here has been invited and um, we appreciate you. If you're here, you are likely a reader, a subscriber, um, an advertiser, or a supporter. So thank you so much. Um, the other contingent of people um, who are here, there's the family, um, me and my sister Karima, and uh, the grandkids of Charles and Chris Elliott is here over here. But there's also the staff. Um, so I have the people who've written for us over the years and um, delivered papers and sold ads, it would be wonderful if you all took a second to stand up and you see that a lot of this I didn't even name everyone. Just long hey, I can't. I mean, just too many. Um, but thank you, because um, you guys all, everybody was a part of making this 35 years. Um, I'd also like to thank our uh, sponsor for the evening, uh, General Motors and Chevrolet. And, um, all the advertisers through the years that have kept us going, and a special thanks to Stephanie at Roberts Riverwalk, who is so helpful in uh, making this a wonderful event. Thank you, Stephanie. And now I'd like to bring up my mother, uh, Teresa Cohen, who started. <laughs> this is a real one for the family. Um, started when she went to the center along with my father uh, 35 years ago on our dining room table. So, Teresa Kelly. they never say is that there was a leak on that dining room table. Every time it rained, the water would come down around the light fixture and hit that table. And when Karima was, she told me not to tell her age, when Karima was little and the paper was just starting, she said, it's raining on your business. <laughs> so, um, as everybody knows, this is not my thing to grab a mic. So, uh, Actually, I've got four pages here. <laughs> Hold on. What I want to do is thank people. I want to thank everybody, and I'll never thank everybody. It's an impossible task. Um, when we started the paper, um, Joel Thurtell was a writer for the South Bend Tribune, and he came and interviewed us and did it because it was a phenomenon for Benton Harbor to have a newspaper of its own. The Herald Palladium had fled across the river to uh, St. Joe, and uh, here was the uh, this small, struggling, black paper, and um, he went on to the free press, but um, that it, one thing he said to me was, and I had it's a familiar quote, but it had never come across my way before, that the newspapers are the first draft of history. And that never left me. I always kept that, that the voices of all the people over the 35 years, that that was the most important thing about that paper, to get their voice out there for history. I'd like to thank tonight Chevrolet for holding, for hosting this for us. That, that's a big breakthrough for the Michigan Citizen. Any organization has to have finances. And our finances have started with the first paid subscriber. This is Shannon Madison, who lived in St. Joseph across the river, but who was married to an executive in Whirlpool. And because he was a black executive, he was expected to live in St. Joe, not Benton Harbor. The supermarket, I forget the name of it, I'm sorry, I'll do the research for my book, put the name in. That that bought the that Chuck Kelly sold the first advertising to that supported us. And Barbara Winans and Inez Holmes. Inez Holmes, one of the founders of the Black Social Workers. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. Who went and visited their sister market in St. Joe and <coughs> Benton Harbor Market and did a price comparative. Right. It was a great story, but we lost the advertising. <laughs> that, that's been our history. I want to thank James Cross, who was acting treasurer of Benton Harbor, who, who said, can you print the city audit? And as you know, cash is king in any business. On, I said man. yes. Well, I'd be at the office, mm, 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 pushing those papers through that Xerox machine. What I didn't know was that Xerox was charging us per copy. We, I couldn't pay the bill. We ended up in court. 
They got their money eventually. I want to thank um, Seagram's, Johnny Walker, Miller, and Bud Light, because it was the tavern that we owned, the Brooklyn Bar and Grill, that financed the first years of the paper. The city of Benton Harbor came in, took the license off the wall, we had to close down. So thanks to Quentin Fulcher, who has gone on, but who's, whose whole office was in the back seat of his car, who was a brilliant man, but had been, um, he, he saved us. He got the license back on the wall and got the, pay, and got the tavern open and the money started back. I want to thank Reverend Jesse Jackson. His many campaigns over the years, Bud's a dud. Remember that? Well, he shook the tree, and that money fell into communities all across this country, including Benton Harbor and the little old, what then was called the Citizen Newspaper. I would like to thank the Benton Harbor chapter of Deltas, who every year would, 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 for a fundraiser, buy subscriptions to the paper, and part of the proceeds went to their coffers, but we, had, we got subscribers. I would like to thank Mayor Kwame Cook and Kilpatrick. All right. thousand copies of our paper and he, because of the articles that were in it and paid to have them distributed around Detroit who purchased who, who purchased from us ordered from us a, a, a production of a paper pushing Detroit based businesses encouraging people at Christmas time to shop in Detroit right. thank you Mayor Kilpatrick and it was not Then there are all the advertisers, from the mom and pop stores, uh, from City Cab to MGM Grand, Michigan Lottery, Greektown, Motor City, McDonald's, YMCA, Home Depot, CVS, Meyer, they keep us going. But most of all, to the subscribers and the readers. That's, that's what we need. From back in the days when we first started in Benton Harbor, Bernice Brown came to us. She owes, she gets a big thank you. 16 years, she, she had been laid off from ball rubber. Benton Harbor's a big canning, fruit growing area. And she went to OIC, Reverend Leon Sullivan, got her training, came to the Michigan Citizen. Bob Bell, who distributed the paper. Jesse Hooper, who distributed the paper. Warren Mitchell. Warren Mitchell, who got an opportunity to share the, the rich and glorious history of Benton Harbor That's for right. the first time. That's right. Happy Jack, who would clean our windows, and when he got too much of Mr. Kelly's products at the Brooklyn, would be directing traffic in the middle of Main Street, <laughs> but also taught us about Ronald Reagan's crushing reforms. He had a 21-page form he had to fill out in order to stand in line and get cheese. And you all remember that cheese. <laughs> Reverend Eddie King in Benton Harbor and his five sons who would come every week to pick up 300 copies of the paper, stand in front of Jewel food stores and sell them. When we came to Highland Park, Mayor Robert Blackwell, who made us the official paper of Highland Park, his son Art Blackwell, Dr. Colbert Heath, who welcomed us to the college, Chuck Gordon, The Men's Forum, Earl Wheeler, Titus McClary, Amina Omar, Chris Woodard, the list goes on and on. Content supplied by, Mar supplied by Martha Madison and Dr. David Milburn. Adrian Henderson, who came from Prairie View in Texas with a journalism degree and taught us how to organize our archives. Ernesto Todd Morales, who insisted we hold weekly reporter meetings and insisted on that our writers have a quote by the third paragraph. Watch for that. <laughs> Kwasi Akwamu, Jesse Longbay, who Jesse Longbay, who's been writing with us since before he came to us. And a special thank you to Grace Lee Boggs and Shay Howell, who came to us during the newspaper strike and said that the citizen showed the only paper, of all the papers in town, the only one that had some roots in the community or a desire to be progressive, a desire to report the community, and brought to us a, a, a stellar group of people and it, that formed an advisory board. Charles Simmons, Elena Harada, and KK Zola, Gloria House, the left, who then came and lifted our arts page the level of inspiration and, 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 and the shining love for community that shone through her work. 
Elisa Grule, and Annie Babs, who got us out of our financial difficulties. Yeah. Brian Ambrosi, Brian Burry, David Sands, all walked us through the technical, diff technical problems of going from the old paste and cut to a um, technical digital uh, paper. And Charles Kelly had that vision. He would read all the printing magazines. He knew what was coming. He took our printer and made our printer go from paste up to digital copies. <clears throat> we had to leave on the park, unfortunately, because of the first emergency manager would not um, would not in any way accommodate us. Had, we, they owed us a terrific amount of money for the advertising. All we wanted in exchange was a building, but we had no luck. So we came to Detroit. Kojo and Harriet Graham, the combination gave us the office on Bagley. Earl, Earl Durham, he's here tonight. His devotion to the paper has just been started. on the bus delivering papers. When Mr. Kelly was sick, he took the bus to go see Mr. Kelly. But through thick and thin over the years, Earl has been there for us and contributed in any number of ways. Jesse Hooper, Gerald Hairston, Ari Frazier, Kim Meeks, Heidi Osgood, Nadir Omawali, Biba Adams in her hip hop columns, Kelly Dickens who went on to uh, ABC, David Sands, Salah Ahmed, Alan Hagebuck with their graphic design, getting the paper out every week, and Paul Lee, who did his masterful series on the rebellion, who, who has presented black history in the pages of our paper masterfully over the years. Ron Siegel, who added Graymark to the lexicon of Detroit. Right. Diane Bukowski's series on Justice Department came to Detroit, they came to the Citizen for every article, any word she had written. Dale Rich, whose photographs yeah. have covered yeah. her history like nobody else. Wanda Rokemore, Eric Campbell, Nina and Akila Bianchi, and Char McCloud, who's still with us, although he's in Austin, Texas, and is moving to New York next year. It was Shar who found us the building where we are now. He rode his bicycle to work. And because he had that street level view, he said, there's a building I think you'll be interested in on, Tr on Trumbull and Howard. And sure enough, it happened. Right. One of Chuck Kelly's long dreams was to own, the, own our own building. Finally, the, peoples who have, the people who have helped us tell the story, those people who we quote, who provide us with information. Councilwoman Joanne Watson. <laughs> Sharon McPhail, J.D. Hill, Attorney Greg Cleveland, Tom Pope, Minister Malik Shabazz and his assault on dirty grocery stores. Greg Frazier, who always could cut through the financial gobbledygook and make the story relevant. Ralph Simpson and Mark Fancher of the ACLU and their school to prison. <laughs> John Royal and the National Lawyers Guild, Sugar Law Center, Helen Moore, and Keep the Vote No Takeover, Russ Pinnock, Paul Taylor and the Million Man March Alumni, We the People with Cecily McClen McClellan, Valerie Glenn, Deborah Taylor, Occupy Detroit Movement, Agnes Hitchcock, Sandra Hines, Raphael Johnson and the Detroit 300, Avioni Ozeque with the Pan African Newswire, Ron Scott, Detroit Coalition against of a generation. Steve Kahn, Arnetta Grable, Reverend David Bullock, Saint Rep, State Rep John Aluba, who has recently appeared on the scene with strong and consistent political views. Maureen Taylor, Marion Creed, Rock always on the front line. Robert Davis, using his legal skills for the people. Untold numbers whose voices we hear from citizens speak. Herb Saunders and Richard Mapp with the uh, Stand Up for Democracy, and on and on and on. Four pages will never capture it. And finally, the current staff, a glorious group. Jan Frazier, who keeps us all together. Jesse Longbay, Victor Walker, Mike Sandula, 
all under the leadership of Zenobia Jeffries. All of you have contributed. All of you have our gratitude. All of you hold a place in our heart. And if I forgot anybody, it's old age. <laughs> Dr. King said, the quali quality of a life is not to be uh, the long judged by the longevity of the life, but rather the quality is what's important. And I like to think that that's what the citizen offers, the quality of the people's offering, the people's voice. Thank yes. you. And we did a proclamation from the city that I signed draft, dropped off earlier today, one of my staff. It is important for you to know that since I majored in journalism a long, long time ago, Dan Frazier at University of Michigan, uh, newspapers are not just another industry to me. So when I first met Charles Kelly, my husband is from Benton Harbor, Michigan. So I was introduced to the Michigan Citizen when I was in Benton Harbor, Michigan, helping to found the first cha black chapter of the social worker there in Benton Harbor. We introduced Kwanzaa to Benton Harbor. Uh, we wrote a, a, a column in the, the Racist Herald Palladium there. And made the, when, when the Michigan Citizen came up, when Charles Scully came from Chicago to Benton Harbor and introduced it, we went crazy. We said, ah, the Lord. <laughs> the Lord is smiling on Benton Harbor. Yes. Yes. So when Michigan Citizen moved to Detroit, Highland Park, it was it was uh, absolutely <laughs> breathtaking to see this progressive statewide black-owned paper with this magnificent woman, Teresa Kelly, Terry Kelly, Charles Kelly, who put their own family at risk in order to have a voice for the people. Statewide, everywhere black people were positioned in the state, that was the Michigan citizen. The Benton Harbor, the Muskegon, the Flint, Detroit, Highland Park. Nobody has done what the Michigan citizen Amen. has done statewide. We owe much. Charles Kelly, when I left the NACP and was working for John Conyers, he showed up unexpectedly. Look at Jack, little Charles Kelly. He showed up unexpectedly at John Conyers' office and said, I need you at R.J. Watson Station. Uh, yes. Watson, well, you got a degree in journalism. In fact, Mr. Kelly convinced me, as busy as I was at the NACP, to write a weekly column called On the Cutting Edge. Without being on time, I did that every week. So somebody, he said, needs to know what the NACP director is doing. That's right. I did that for years and years. But Mr. Kelly came and plucked me out of Conyers' office and said, come follow me, and we're going to R.J. Watkins Station because he needs somebody with a journalism degree opening up, broadcasting on that black owned station in Highland Park. That's how I got to wake up Detroit on R.J. Watkins. It was Charles Kelly. Teresa Kelly. What you have done to strengthen our community, not just black folks, the entire state is better because of you. This nation is better because of you and your family's investment and commitment. I don't, if I had a thousand tongues, I could not thank you enough for what the Michigan citizen has done. Changing. God bless the Michigan citizen forever and ever and ever, and I thank you for what you've done for me.